Hey everyone, Bancroft here from Attack on Productions with another uh, Dragon Ball Super deck profile with you. And like I mentioned in our last video, I'm bringing back Prison. Prison is one of my favorite decks to play. Um, regardless of what hardcore deck I choose, I choose to take to my uh, locals, everyone of my locals knows me for the Prison player. And with the release of Set 9, I was actually able to go back to some of my old school roots with Prison, which I absolutely love. So let's get into this deck. And I'll show you why. So, we play the set 6 Frieza, which, um, permanent, you cannot play a battle card of energy cost of 3 or less in this deck. That's it. So, all my battle cards have to be energy cost 4 or higher, which is fine. Activate main, once per turn, look up the top 5 cards of my deck, search for one red extra card among them, add it to my hand, then shuffle my deck right afterwards. This leader's awakening ability is, um, draw, well, as long as your life is 4 or less, you draw 2 cards and you flip them over. Once flipped over, we get the Golden Frieza, the Majestic Emperor. Activate main. Once returned, draw one card. So I don't even need to attack you to draw a card. I could just activate my main, and there we go. Auto. When this card is attacked by a battle card, you may choose one red Frieza's army card in my in your hand, place it into your dropper if you do negate the attack and the skill for duration of turn. So, as it being a prison deck, I have a crap ton of negates. This is just one more negate per turn I can use on battle cards, which is pretty exciting. Speaking of negates, let's go straight into some of my extra cards. So, I chose to play three of the Paralyzing Technique. This is a pretty nice one because it negs fives everything on the board, including the leader. Um, of course, it doesn't get past barrier, but early game, even late game, like if they swing their battle cards first, I just parallel technique, the leader goes to my 5,000, so if they want to attack the leader, they have to combo and get rid of cards in hand just to be able to get the attack off in the first place. Play three, is that all you got? For one energy, it's a counter negate, discard one red card in your hand, uh, and then you can choose up two of your opponent's battle cards, they get neg 15,000 for the duration of the turn, which is pretty cool for potentially clearing my opponent's board as well as negating their attacks. Now, in my opinion, it wouldn't be a red deck if I didn't incorporate After Image. In this case, I play four of them. So After Image, if you're not familiar with it, it's not really a negate, more as a counter attack. So as soon as your opponent declares an attack, I go counter attack. My lead, well, what my leader or battle card choose up to one of my cards pretty much on my field to get plus 40,000 power for the duration of battle. And then I can choose one of my opponent's battle cards and they get a minus 10,000 power for duration of turn. So it's another way of hopefully getting rid of stuff on my opponent's board that I don't want to see there. Um, this card does have Sparking, which um, if you have five or more cards in your drop, you can activate the skill by taking a life, which is pretty cool. And if I have an Awaken, it's a good way to pinch Awaken myself. But with this deck, I try to hold off on Awaken as much as possible, at least depending on what I am playing against. Now this next one really isn't an extra card, but it is what I would assume a staple to most red decks. Especially for negates. Topo. Righteous Aid. Now yeah, this is a battle card, but on my opponent's turn, he is considered two energy, which is pretty sweet. So, counterattack, choose one card, uh, choose one other card in your hand, place it into your drop area, negate the attack, and play this card. This card has an auto effect, which is pretty awesome. If it's your opponent's turn when you play this card, for the duration of the turn, your opponent can't attack unless they choose two cards from their hand and place them in the drop area for each time they attack. Now, that being said, most times when you use Topo as a counter, it's going to stop the attack. Um, and if I know like my opponent has a pretty he heavy board and I don't want to get too many attacks off, I'll play Topo. And that will kind of make them either pass their turn or attack maybe once or twice more depending on the cards in their hand. Regardless, it, leaves, it removes cards from their hand, which is pretty nice for me. We do play two Denial of Hopes, which is just a two drop. Uh, counterplay if your leader card is uh, red and the battle card your opponent is playing is has 20 uh, sorry has 20,000 power or less place that card in the drop area instead of being played pretty nice and for another counterplay we go with the Gallic gun uh, sorry Gallic cannon which I also play two of those which when uh, the battle card is played choose up to one of your one of those battle cards and it gets neg 15,000 power for duration of turn so Potentially, if my opponent plays a 20,000 battle card, I could combo it, and well, Gallic Cannon it, and then when they swing, Parallel Technique takes care of the problem. 
Or maybe they just won't attack and they'll pass turn, giving me another turn to get to where I want to get to in the end. I do have an activate battle. So beforehand, I used to play the uh, Kaba's Awakening, which is like a free extra card, which is activate battle, give plus 6,000 power to uh, a card in your choice on, on your field. Um, or for battle, sorry. But I took those out and I added two of these in instead. If your uh, leader card is red, choose up to one of your uh, leader card or battle cards, it gets plus 15,000 power for Drayson uh, battle. Auto. If all of your energy is red when you activate this card, choose up to one of your opponent's leader cards or battle cards. It gets neg negative 10,000 power for duration of battle. So I could potentially use this to finish something off that I've already uh, paralyzed or after image or even um, is that all you got? Or I could just do this to my opponent's leader, making them not be able to attack with them at all, which is pretty cool. And the last extra card, well, it's not really the last. I have one more in the second one to hold off. I got two more. I'm gonna hold off on those. But the next one is New Model Scouter. New Model Scouter is a nice way of searching for my Frieza's Army cards. Um, for one energy, look up the top seven cards in my deck. Choose up the two uh, red Frieza Army cards. Add it, uh, sorry, with energy cost of four more, and add them to my hand. Then shuffle my deck. So this allows me to uh, thin my deck out a little bit. It allows me to get more cards in my hand. So for the next card. I played two of the Frieza's No Introduction. Now, I was playing this one as a three of and Topo as a two of, um, just because of this card's activate main. But what I learned in testing is that I couldn't pull it off most of the time, and I'll get to that why in a second. So I felt like Topo was a better negate option for this deck in the long run, just because I need my opponents to pass their turn as many times as possible. And this card, you know, it's a great negate. So this card also reduces the energy cost by two if it's my opponent's turn. Um, but its activate main is for two red, one blue. Choose one red or blue Frieza card in your hand with energy cost of five and play it on top of this card. So it's a nice way of just kind of evolving to a next target. And that next target in this case will be Frieza the finisher. Now, with all those negates, that I have earlier in the extra card I got in this deck. I tried to put as many as possible before turn four into my drop area. So this is the seven drop Frieza, but he has a permit where if there's five or more extra cards in, sorry, five or more red extra cards in my drop area, reduce the energy cost of this card by one. If there are 10, reduce it by two, which will make it a five drop in my hand to be played on top of Frieza no introduction, which is pretty sweet. Now, when you play this card, if your leader card is Red Freezing Army, choose all battle cards with energy cost of 25,000 power or less, um, ignoring barrier, and KO them. So, does it neg? So anything that can't be negged, it's safe, but he pretty much just will clear the board in most cases. And once you've done that, you swing with it because it has double strike. Hopefully, if you're playing as a blue deck, maybe hold off unless you know for sure they don't have like a Mafuba or anything like that. But after you swing the double strike, go ahead and evolve into Golden Frieza. Wow, I cannot read that one again. Indominal uh, Emperor. Probably just butched that, but that's my bad. Um, he has an easy EX Evolve. Choose up to three cards in your hand. Place them in uh, into your drop area. And then you can place on top of a Frieza of an energy cost of seven. He's a crit. If your leader card is Frieza Army, and you and your so pretty much when he's on the board, you cannot play a battle card, and so and neither can your opponent. It has an energy cost of thirty thousand or less, and if you do, you have to take four of your life and place it into their drop area, which isn't bad. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> so it's just a nice way of blocking my opponent from potentially playing uh, their cards. Now this card does have the auto effect when you this card evolves when a card evolves into this card switch into active mode that's why we go ahead and swing with that uh, swing with the seven drop first before you go into the eight drop. Now once he's on the field I don't attack and the goal hopefully is to get this guy out by turn five for sure. Now a good way of finishing this game is with Frieza's uh, Army Reborn quadruple strike when he is played. Um, my opponent, any battle card on my opponent's side of the field that's 40,000 or less, 
is pretty much KO'd. And ignoring barrier, obviously, as well on that one. But before that happens, I get to choose, look at my opponent's hand and choose up to one card from it and place it into the dropper. So it's a good way of getting rid of potentially a counterplay card or a negate card they may have. And if they don't have any one of those, try to knock out a super combo. Now, the part of this deck that I absolutely love, and that is Ultra Instinct Sun Goku Energy Explosion. It is a red-blue battle card with energy exhaust. He also has Invoker, which... When I play a red-blue uh, multicolor extra card, I can instead switch one of my red-blue um, energies into rest mode instead of paying for its, uh, its entire cost. So regardless of what my red-blue extra cards are, their cost is one while he is on the board, which is pretty nice. He does have an auto where choose three of my energy, place them to the drop area. When this card is played, I can go to my drop area and get three energies in, in Three cards, place them to my energy place, uh, into my energy, wow, with their energy exhaust negated. So pretty much with that play, I will go and grab more multicolored uh, red-blue cards, place them into my energy into active uh, place. Auto, once per turn, when one of your cards deals damage to your opponent, deal one additional damage to your opponent. So, which is pretty nice. So, I can, well... Obviously, with that being said, you know I'm playing Catastrophic Blow, which is a 5-drop uh, red-blue multicolor card, but as long as the 6-drop is on the field, he becomes a 1-cost energy as long as I'm using a red-blue card. Now, Activate Main, if you have a red-blue multicolor Sun Goku uh, card in play and there is no other battle cards in your battle area, deal 1 damage, sorry, or... If there are no other battle cards in your battle area, deal one damage to your opponent. Or activate main. Send this card from your drop area to your warp. Look at the top uh, card of your deck. If it is a multicolor extra card, you may add it to your hand. Otherwise, place it, the top, uh, place it back on top of your deck. All right, so with Cash Rock and Blow, um, all I got to do is pay one red energy, sorry, one multicolor energy as long as he's on the field, deal one damage to my opponent's life, which then procs his once per turn which does an additional damage. Now the goal for this deck, if you haven't picked up on too, is with the Freezes card, I try and try to pull as many of these I can in my hand. I potentially try to shoot for three. That way it's doing four damage to my opponent. Because a lot of times with this deck, I won't attack my opponent more than twice. Unless they have a leader that awakens them themselves, then I won't at all play a leader card. Because the strategy is to get my opponent down to potentially six life, and then when I play him, I'll let my opponent turn around, play a battle card just so they could get the four life, awaken, and then on my turn, play cast or bluff. Or if I give him a seven, you know, that we have three life. My goal is, just, like I said, get two or three of these in my hand. That way I'm at least doing three to four uh, damage to my opponent without me having to swing my leader at all, which is pretty nice. Now that being said, I do have a few more cards. I play three of the Emperor Death Beam, which also has energy exhaust. But activate main or activate battle. Choose one of your opponent's battle cards, ignoring barrier, and it gets uh, negative 30,000 power for the duration of the turn. Activate main. Send this card from your drop area to your warp. Look at the top card of your deck. If it is a multicolor card, you may add it to your hand. Otherwise, place it on top of your deck. Kind of very similar to Cash Rock Blow's secondary effect. Just another way of kind of searching for more cards that way. Um, I typically in this card have used it once in the testing, but most of the time it's either a single energy or I'm finding ways to pitch it into my drop area, either using Topa, is that all you got, or when I combo with Kikano the Fledgling. Um, when you play this, play this play or combo with this card, if your leader card is Red Freeze Army, you may choose one card from your hand, place it into your drop area. If you do, choose one of your opponent's battle cards. You get to minus 5,000 power for duration of turn. So I have a lot of ways of getting extra cards I don't need into my drop area. I have ways of getting the multicolored cards into my drop area. That way, when I use the six drops effect, I can just grab um, three uh, multicolored cards, put them to my energy. And sometimes... I may end up having two or three on the board if it just goes that way, and I'll just take those same three, put them to drop, and then grab those same three and put them back in the active, which is pretty nice. Now, obviously, since I'm a splashing blue, I am running four of the Sense of Beans, which is the final card for this deck. 
Match you up so turn one, charge multi color card. When the rest of the game, if I need to use this thing as a way of defense, I can. If for some reason I'm only getting counter sacked with blows and I'm only seeing one other additional Goku, then I will end up charging my sense of beam because you still need three blue cards if correct to play the six drop. Just to verify. Yeah, three blue, two red. So I've had to unfortunately charge two sense of beams once before, but on average, I get this off pretty quickly. Uh, by quickly, obviously turn six. I've only messed up once, and that's because I accidentally discarded the uh, three drop instead of keeping it so I could charge it next turn. Uh, on turn five, I discarded it on turn four, and it really messed me up because I wasn't thinking about it. And once I realized it, that that was game. I couldn't get another blue energy, and it really messed me up. So it's pretty consistent from what I've seen so far. Um, I'm still running some tweaks to it, and always if you see something like, hey, this may help you out, put in the comments, let me know what it is. I always love improving prison. Like I said, it's one of my favorite decks. I'm known for it in my locals. But yeah, if you guys uh, want to see any other decks coming out, put it in the comments down below. We'll take care of it. We'll get it set up. I like doing funky things, so kind of, if you want to see a curveball, we'll make it happen. Besides that being said, uh, Monday we'll be having our U11 deck, hopefully, um, put up then. But yeah, besides that, Thanks for watching. If you want to see more of our content, like always, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Fluff out.